on. Let's bring in Matt Bennett now. He's in Washington. He's the co-founder of The Third Way, which is a D.C.-based national political think tank, and was formerly deputy assistant to the president for intergovernmental affairs in the Clinton White House. Matt, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, so take us back, kind of from your perspective, having worked inside the White House, how were Democrats and, and Biden viewing this moment? I think it's a real opportunity for Biden to create the kind of split screen that he really wants, which is, uh, on the one hand, him doing his job on behalf of the American people, going to places uh, that are you know, breaking ground to build new factories, to create semiconductor chips or clean energy projects, uh, creating amazingly good jobs and, and pumping all this economic activity uh, into the economy of places like the industrial Midwest. Meanwhile, uh, you have the chaos agent of Trump being arraigned in New York. And what we learned in the midterms of 2022 is Americans are tired of the chaos. They chose mainstream over extreme. And that split screen between uh, those two images of presidents doing very different things, I think really works for Biden. I mean, given all of that, we also saw how uh, former President Trump, when he was running for president in 2016, was scandal plagued, and that didn't seem to have an impact. Is the understanding or the feeling now among Democrats is that we've had so much time between then where we have seen some kind of impact or political consequence of some of this? Nobody thinks that this indictment is going to bring down Donald Trump because uh, we have given up, to your point, we've given up that illusion that anything uh, involving a scandal will necessarily end Trump's career or stop him in his tracks. We thought that would happen multiple times in 2016. We thought during his presidency, some of the incredibly outrageous things that he did uh, might end his career, and, and none of it did. Uh, but collectively, it had an impact. And I think what you saw in the 2020 election was people choosing kind of team normal and Joe Biden over team chaos and Donald Trump. This just adds to that. It's not in and of itself going to be decisive, but I think it is a factor that will weigh on the minds of uh, voters, swing voters who are not committed uh, deeply to either party. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, especially as we have noted before that there are a couple other investigations going on in addition to this. Uh, so watching kind of that movement there, um, you know, you worked under President Clinton. Uh, he obviously w underwent the uh, scandal involving uh, Monica Lewinsky. These, of course, are completely different cases. But Republicans have been kind of pointing to this case as a, a case of behavior, not a case of campaign finance. Is there any sort of uh, kind of roadmap that you could imagine uh, going forward here or any sort of parallels in terms of uh, the perception within the party to um, scandal of a president? Well, in the Trump age, Republicans are uh, seemingly immune from shame or uh, charges of hypocrisy. But <laughs> I was in the Clinton White House during the impeachment and uh, the charges that it, his personal conduct should be, uh, you know, the, the basis for impeachment and then ultimately for uh, losing his bar li uh, law license and other things flew pretty thick from Republicans. So obviously they've changed their tune. Uh, what I think you'll see is Republicans continuing to attack uh, the district attorney, continuing to question the underlying charges here. They have a right to do that, but I think most people think uh, generally, grand juries uh, don't do things for trivial reasons. The DA understood the gravity of arraigning uh, and, and indicting a former president, and he did it after very careful consideration. That isn't to say that Trump doesn't get a presumption of innocence or that he's guilty of these things, but there's no question that there's at least some question about whether there was criminal conduct here, and I think most people will come to that conclusion. Yeah, and still a lot to play out. Um, Matt Bennett, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. My pleasure.